Bon, vous parlez, hein? Moi, moi, je, je travaille. Voilà. There was a legend that whoever drank from the skull of Nostradamus would inherit his incredible powers. But for 200 years, his grave remained undisturbed because the legend also said that whoever did so would immediately die. <laughs> One night, at the height of the French Revolution, three drunken soldiers set out to test the legend. It was not the skeleton that suddenly sobered the soldiers, but the plaque around its neck with the date May 1791, which could only have been placed there at the time of burial in 1566. Nostradamus had predicted 200 years before the exact date when his body would be dug up. Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Ah, no, Robert. No, no. No. Oh, no, Robert. Tu es stupide. The shot that killed that soldier was fired from the riot of the surrounding revolution. A stray bullet, a freak accident that fulfilled the legend of Nostradamus. Nostradamus. What kind of a man was he who predicted the date of the desecration of his own grave, whose predictions were used as propaganda during World War II? A man who has accurately predicted events over the last 400 years, from the French Revolution to the Kennedys, and on into the future, even to a third world war, and eventually the total destruction of the world as we know it. What then are we to make of his predictions? If they're true of the past, what of the future? Tonight, we would like to introduce you to the prophecies of Nostradamus. Nostradamus were transferred and buried here in the wall of the church at Salon. This, his
his final resting place is only 40 kilometers from the small village of saint romy de provence where he was born in the year 1503. His ancestry was Jewish, but his immediate family had converted to Christianity. Although his father was a doctor, they led a simple life in this small house, nestling in the shadow of the church. His grandfather, also a doctor, began to educate him at an early age in medicine and the classics, but more significantly in the ancient science of the stars, astrology. With this rich heritage of learning behind him, Nostradamus moved to the world-famous university city of Montpellier, where he studied medicine at the academy. Here, he amazed his fellow students and teachers with his lectures on astrology. He expounded his theory that the Earth was round, revolving around the Sun, 100 years before Galileo. That plague, the dreaded curse of the 16th century, spread across Europe. And Nostradamus, when he graduated as a doctor at the age of 22, threw himself into the struggle against it. Oddly enough, he was most successful in combating the plague with a simple yet unorthodox cure of clean air and unpolluted water. He achieved amazing results with what we now know to be common sense, and his fame as a healer soon spread and afflicted towns from all over Europe sent for him. But his own wife and two daughters he could not save. After they died, Nostradamus was left alone and wandered aimlessly through Europe. attention turned more and more to the study of astrology and the occult. It was during this time that Nostradamus first began to experience his visions of the future. He returned to the south of France and settled here in the small town of Salon, where he remarried and made his permanent home. study, he began to record his amazing visions. Soon, stories circulated about him, earning him the reputation of being at first an eccentric, and then a mystic. On one occasion, he was invited to a banquet where his host attempted to trick him. He told Nostradamus they would be eating pig that evening. He said he had a black pig and a white pig, and he invited his guest to predict which of the two they would eat. Nostradamus said, the black one. The man then went to the kitchen and instructed the cook to prepare the white pig. Later that evening, as they were enjoying their meal, he again asked Nostradamus to say which pig they were eating. He was told the black one, and triumphantly he denounced his guest's ability as a prophet. When Nostradamus quietly insisted that it was indeed the black pig, the man summoned the cook and asked him to declare which of the two pigs they were eating. The cook said that while he'd been preparing the white pig, it had suddenly been snatched from the table and devoured by the dogs. So he'd been forced to serve the black pig. But Nostradamus had embarked on something more important than the entertainment of the nobility. In Salon, he set up an intensive study of what was now his life's major work. Seated at night in my secret study, alone 
reposing over the brass tripod. A slender flame leaps out of the solitude, making me pronounce that which is not in vain. Divining rod in hand is put in the middle of the branches, with water moisten the limb and the foot. Struggling fear, sleeves trembling, heavenly splendor, the divine seats himself nearby. His writings clearly show that Nostradamus was both able to see and to hear these events, almost as if he were present in some future time. Was this the work of God or of the devil? For this was the age of witchcraft. The 16th century was a time when superstition made men strike out at the unusual, the odd and the eccentric. And countless innocent people were tried, convicted and sentenced to horrible tortures and death. For such a man, for any man, to announce the predictions now tumbling before him was to invite disaster. So Nostradamus began to write down his predictions in such a way that they would be preserved for posterity and survive fear, suspicion, and destruction through ignorance. He chose a four-lined rhyming verse known as the quatrain. Writing in his native French, he confused the verse with Latin, Greek, and even anagrams. So the truth would have to be unraveled, interpreted, and deciphered. He wrote 1,000 quatrains, dividing them into 10 groups of 100 each, called centuries. One half of the quatrains have already come true, nearly 100 of them in recent times. Some are too obscure even for today's scholars. For, as a final precaution, Nostradamus threw his predictions into the air and by compiling them in the order in which they fell, completely confused the chronological order of events. Only then did he consider it safe to publish. His precautions have been rewarded in that his book is one of the few to remain constantly in print since it was first published in the 16th century. His first edition of 350 quatrains was published two years before his death, in 1564. He was immediately summoned before the court of King Henry II, because in one of the published quatrains he wrote, The young lion will overcome the old one on the battlefield, in single combat. In a cage of gold his eyes will be put out, two wounds in one, then to die a cruel death. This was the 35th quatrain of the first century, which suggested that the old lion, King Henry, would die in a tournament. The king said it was ridiculous, that he would never joust and would always protect himself against such a wound. Nostradamus replied that his predictions offered fates that could be avoided, destinies that could be diverted. But soon after, there was a unique double wedding of the daughters of the king and part of the celebrations was the staging of a tournament in which the king determined to take part. Reminded of the prophecy, he insisted that he would fight in single combat, but that he would wear a protective gold helmet. The young lion will overcome the old one. The young lion was Count Gabriel de Montgomery. On the battlefield in single combat, Despite the attempts of the young count to refuse the match, they met in the safest possible combat. Wearing a gold helmet, no lance could possibly penetrate to inflict the injury predicted. In a cage of gold, his eyes will be put out. As they came together, the lance of the young count hit the king's chest, splintered and jabbed up under the protective visor. Two wounds in one. The splintered shaft penetrated through the eye and into the brain. 
and it took the king some ten days to die in terrible agony. Then to die a cruel death. The blood of the just shall be dry in London, burnt by the fire of three times twenty and six. This is the first prediction to come true after the death of Nostradamus, in which he predicts the Great Fire of London and accurately gives the date, three times twenty and six, 1666, a prediction he made 100 years before the event. Erica Cheatham, authoress of the current best-selling book on Nostradamus, has devoted most of her life to the study of his prophecies. He writes of the Great Fire, and he also writes in the fire, the extraordinary story was that a lot of people ran to St. Paul's Church uh, for sanctuary, hoping that, that would protect them from the fire in London. And the statue of the Virgin on the porch with the heat cracked and toppled down. And he talks of the, the Virgin who falls and crashes. The ancient dame shall fall. Of the same sect, many shall be killed. For the future, idiots without heads. No doubt the event that distressed Nostradamus most, being French, was the revolution beginning in 1789. Despite the king, the coin will be brought lower. The people shall rise against their king. Peace being made, holy laws made worse. Paris was never in such great disorder. It must have caused him great pain to see the turmoil that was about to befall his beloved France. Yet, with amazing clarity, he predicted events about which he could have had no inkling. Charles Nielsen Gatti, author of They Saw Tomorrow, which includes many prophets, but concentrates strongly on the works of Nostradamus. Whether they were true or not, after the event, a conspicuous example, I think, of this, is the famous verse in which he says that the first elected king of France, which Louis XVI was, would be stopped with his queen, noted for the color white, which Marie Antoinette was, at a village called Varennes in the north of France and taken back to Paris, the capital, to be executed by a new form of dread, death, which is, of course, remarkable. 1555, that came about in 1791. He was foretelling not only the actual name of the place, Varennes, but also the bringing to being of the guillotine. Another example, the advent of the jury system. The reign taken, the king will conspire. The lady taken to death by those sworn by lot. Those sworn by a lot, a jury. The life of the queen's son will be denied, and the concubine suffers the same as the wife. The lady taken to death, Marie Antoinette, and the concubine, Madame de Barry. The West shall be freed of the British Isles. Nostradamus wrote about revolution in all countries. For example, the American War of Independence. The eldest sister of the Britannic Island shall be born 15 years before her brother by what is promised her and by help of truth. She shall succeed in the Kingdom of Balance. The eldest sister of the Britannic island shall be born 15 years before her brother. This remarkable prediction not only accurately suggests that America, the eldest sister, will achieve independence before France, her brother, but actually stipulates the gap of 15 years between the beginnings of the Republic in each country. America in 1776, France in 1791. Exactly 15 years. And he goes on. 
By what is promised her, and by help of truth, she shall succeed in the kingdom of balance. The kingdom of balance. This indicates that the Republic of the United States will ensure balance and peace in the world. And there is no doubt that the United States has fulfilled that prediction. Comrade Red Guardsman, I greet you as the first heroic volunteers of the Socialist Army, which is the basis of a strong revolutionary army, which will defend what we have achieved through revolution, our own Soviet power. Justice is on our side. Victory is certain. The Russian Revolution of 1917. The realm left to two, they will hold it very briefly. Three years, seven months will pass in making war. The two Vestals will rebel in opposition. Victor, the latest born in the land of Armenia. Lenin and Trotsky attained power in November 1917. They did not continue the war with Germany for long, but concluded a separate peace in March 1918 exactly three years and seven months after the beginning of the war. The two Vestals will rebel in opposition. After the death of Lenin in 1924, Trotsky and Stalin became rivals. Victor, the latest born in the land of Armenia. Stalin emerged the victor. He was the younger man, born in Georgia as we know it. But in the day of Nostradamus, Georgia was part of Armenia. One of the greatest shall flee into Spain, which after shall cause a wound to bleed long, leading armies over high mountains, destroying all, afterwards shall reign in peace. Here, Nostradamus refers to the long war in Spain, after which he says, they shall reign in peace, which is exactly what happened. Because after the establishment of the Franco regime in 1938, Spain remained neutral during World War II. But he went even further. In another quatrain, he actually names Franco. From Spanish, Franco shall come the assembly. The ambassador, not pleased, shall make a separation. Those of the Riviera shall be in the struggle and shall deny entry into the great gulf. From Spanish, Franco, 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 Franco. But this is not the only real name Nostradamus wrote. In Century One, Quatrain 25, he says, the lost thing is discovered, hidden for many centuries. Pasteur will be celebrated as a demigod when the moon completes her great cycle. Here, he clearly names Louis Pasteur and refers to his introduction of sterilization in 1889, the exact year that the cycle of the moon was completed. Pasteur the scientist and Franco the leader, both named by Nostradamus in the 1500s. But he speaks of many leaders, some he calls antichrists, a description not just of the men, but of the movements they led against peace and Christian principles. He refers to three antichrists. The first was Napoleon, the second Hitler, and the third yet to come. An emperor will be born near Italy, one who will cost his empire quite high a price. They will say that with such people as rally round him, he will be found less prince than Butchoff. This was the first use of the word emperor in association with France. Not only did Nostradamus, living in an age of kings, 
have to predict their disappearance, but that such a man as Napoleon would take for himself that august title, Emperor. And to be born near Italy, in Corsica, was unheard of for a French ruler. From a simple soldier, he will attain to empire. From a short robe, he will attain the long. Great swarms of bees will arise, such that nobody will know whence they've come. This is an excellent example of both his accuracy and the clever way in which Nostradamus hid his true meaning. The reference to great swarms of bees would have had very little significance until 1799, the year Napoleon, as emperor, adopted the beehive as his crest. For 14 years he will hold the tyranny. Napoleon's length of reign, from the day he overthrew the Directory, on November the 9th, 1799, to April the 13th, 1814, was 14 years and five months. A great troop gathered shall come from Russia. The destroyer shall ruin a city. The name Napoleon is Greek for the new destroyer, and Nostradamus predicts the abortive attack against Russia and the beginning of the downfall of Napoleon. The rear guard will make defense but the exhausted ones will die in the white territory. Out of the deepest part of the west of Europe, from poor people, a young child shall be born who, with his tongue, shall seduce many people. Neurosis, charlatanism, bombast, anti-socialism, hate to the Jews, treachery, murder, race insanity. I am the leader of the German people! The great squawker, proud without shame, shall be elected governor of the army. captain of great Germany shall come to yield himself by false help to the king of kings with the help of Hungary so that his revolt shall cause great bloodshed. They shall pursue crosses of iron topsy-turvy. Under the feigned shadow of freeing people from slavery, he shall usurp the people and city for himself. He shall do worse by the deceit of a young whore, for he shall be betrayed in the field, reading a false poem. It reads like a Grimm's fairy tale, until you remember how hideously real it all was. In all of these quatrains, Nostradamus is accurately describing Hitler and the Third Reich. And yet there are three other quatrains which have caused some debate among the experts. They contain the word Hister, H-I-S-T-E-R. Some commentators maintain that in these, Nostradamus is actually giving the name Hitler. They, they cannot be applied, I think, with any logic to any other person in history that we know to date. Unless they're futuristic, and I'm quite wrong, they're Hitler. And the name Hister next to them seems to me to be pretty conclusive. Liberty will not be regained. It will be occupied by a black, proud, villainous and unjust man. When the matter of the Pope is opened by Hister, the Republic of Venice will be vexed. Well, there seems little doubt that Hitler is meant here. But the second quatrain is more difficult to interpret as Hitler, especially if we know that the word Hister is Latin for the river Danube. The two greatest ones of Asia and Africa will be said to have come from the Rhine and the Hister. 
Well, the Danube certainly does make more sense in this case, as suggested by the author of The Fate of the Nations, Mr. Arthur Prioditis. But uh, it's clearly a reference to, to, to the river Danube. Uh, history is the Latin name of Danube. But both commentators can't be right. Or can they? Perhaps Nostradamus has actually thrown in a red herring. Perhaps two meanings are intended, for in the third quatrain, it's possible to see both viewpoints. Beasts ferocious from hunger will swim across rivers, the greater part from the fields against the hister. In an iron cage, the great one will be dragged, when the German child will observe no law. Hitler or Danube, both work. So it's obvious that on this point, Nostradamus succeeded in confusing even our modern day scholars. But despite his red herring, there's no doubt from the other quatrains that Nostradamus saw Hitler and described his atrocities with tragic accuracy. There are quatrains that could refer to Hitler, as for instance, the, the, the one in which he mentions Nero. By the third uh, premier, he evidently means the, the, the leader of the Third Reich, which was Hitler. The third premier, worse than ever did Nero, see the spilling of brave human blood. He shall cause the furnace to be rebuilt. Brothers and sisters shall be slaves in various places. They shall go in heaviness, witness their chin, forehead and nose. The bloody emperor by battle shall make a speech and roast the tongue, the flesh and the bones. They shall think to have seen the sun in the night when the hog, half a man, shall be seen. Noise, singing, battles in the sky shall be perceived and brute beasts shall be heard to speak. Here is another example of how the prophecy only becomes clear after the event. It could be said that Nostradamus himself does not quite understand what he is seeing here. It would be difficult to conceive in 1560 that one day man would fly and wear oxygen masks. So he describes the vision, half hog, half a man. half a man shall be seen, noise, singing, battles in the sky shall be perceived, and brute beasts shall be heard to speak. The beasts heard to speak is the radio talkback, and battles in the sky we now know too well. strange way. He understood aeroplanes, he understood flying in the air, he understood ships that went underwater full of men, and all these things, which was very, very strange. He, he was writing in 1555 odd, at the latest. In the islands shall be such horrible tumults that nothing shall be heard by a warlike surprise. So great shall be the assault of the robbers that everyone shall shelter himself under the great line. Another hidden meaning. There's a remarkable verse in which he implies that the whole population of London will take refuge in the great line under the city, 
which of course is a very good description of the London Underground. And he says that living fire in globes will descend upon the city and light it up so that it can be destroyed. It seems almost as though he had an indication of what incendiaries would be like and what their use would be to light up the target for the bombers. By night, the fleet shall shoot against the city. The city shall be on fire, the enemy shall be favorable to it. As well as seeing planes and bombing, Nostradamus also describes ships and even army ducks. When the fish that is both terrestrial and aquatic by a strong wave shall be cast upon the shore. Nostradamus casts his net wide. There hardly seems an event not touched by his distant probe. He saw all aspects of war, but he also saw peace. The scourge being passed, the world shall be made smaller. Peace for a long time. Everyone shall go safely by air, land, and sea. And then... He will come to take himself to the corner of Luna, where he will be taken and placed on a strange land. this quatrain, referring to man's walk on the moon, Nostradamus goes further to talk about the space race and its attendant tragedies. The unripe fruit shall cause great scandal, great blame. During the space race, both the Americans and the Russians lost lives in accidents, in many cases attributed to the rush to launch men into space prematurely. As Nostradamus so aptly puts it, the unripe fruit. But as well as the failure, Nostradamus also saw the success. Great blame. To the other, great praise.
What vision? What prophecy? Not only to see the future as played out on Earth, but also in space, some 400 years before the event. That you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. John F. Kennedy, one of the greatest political figures of our time. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. President and victim of the assassin's bullet, all predicted by Nostradamus. The great man falls by lightning in the day, an evil foretold by the postulant one. According to the forecast, another falls in the hours of the night. Here we have the assassinations of Robert and John Kennedy, both predicted in the one quatrain. Also the suggestion that a modern day prophet would predict the event and try to warn the men. An evil foretold by the postulant one. Gene Dixon publicly foretold the assassination of President Kennedy 11 years beforehand in 1952. And I remember that day of August 1952 it was pouring down rain just as it was when you came. And I felt this presence so close to me, very close to me. And as I went to the St. Matthews, was kneeling in prayer in front of the Holy Mother. There it showed me as though it was a film, everything that would happen. And it even showed me that the president would be seated, he'd be Democrat and assassinated in his first term. Now that was a revelation, that was a prophecy, that would not change. Well, it's interesting that Jean Dixon, like Nostradamus, used a trance method of seeing into the future. But then, when I got the name of the assassin, that it would be a plot, that was a prediction. That was picking up the thoughts. It's like when you turn on uh, radio or television and pick up a certain channel. So I picked up the channel and got the name of Oswald, and that's documented before it happened. And as, uh, as I recall, I tried many ways to get to the president. And I thought, well, the best way, the easiest way, was to go to Kay Halley. Kay Halley was a very, very close friend of the president's. In fact, knew the father long before uh, Jack was born. And I asked her, would she go to the White House and intercede for me and ask the president not to go to the Southwest? And his trip had not been announced publicly. She said, Gene, what trip? I said, Kay, it's a trip to the Southwest, to Texas. And she promised to go to the White House and intercede for me, and she did go. Just as Gene Dixon's warning was ignored, so too was that of Nostradamus, even though in Quatrain 37 of the 6th century, he writes with incredible detail of the controversy that would arise over who was actually guilty. The ancient work will be accomplished. From the roof, evil ruin shall fall onto the great man. Being dead, they will accuse an innocent of the deed, the guilty one hidden in the misty woods. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the murder of President Kennedy and was himself assassinated before trial. This is the basement floor of the Dallas City Hall, and that's a scuffle on the basement floor. It's been concerned for part of it. He has been shot. It was initially accepted that he was the only one responsible, but new evidence has not only suggested that others were involved, but indeed, that Oswald himself might not have fired the fatal shot. Being dead, they will accuse an innocent of the deed. Oswald was reported to have shot Kennedy in the back from the sixth story of this building. But two bullets hit the president. One was from behind, but the second, the fatal shot, clearly came from the front, as can be seen from this eight millimeter film. The only possible position for an assassin to be concealed in front of the car at that moment was this clump of bushes known as the grassy knoll. It is believed that this film actually shows the outline of a man and a rifle, here arrowed, concealed in the bushes. And Nostradamus says, The guilty one, hidden in the misty woods. Much controversy still surrounds the now infamous Warren report. Accusations of guilt have come from all levels and many strange events have occurred since. 
Many questions have remained unanswered, but the one thing that does seem certain is that Nostradamus obviously had an incredible insight into what really happened. According to the forecast, another falls in the hours of the night. Robert Kennedy was assassinated on the night of June the 5th, 1968. And here again, Nostradamus refers to a warning of the event. And I was asked, would Robert Kennedy win the election? Will he be our next president? My reply was no, that Senator Robert Kennedy will never be president of the United States unless he withdraws his candidacy and does not run again until 1976, because 1976 is his timing that he's rushing it, and that he would be assassinated, and I said it would be right here in this room. I said he would be carried away in his own blood. We saw wrong and tried to right it. Saw suffering and tried to heal it. Saw war and tried to stop it. Those of us who loved him and who take him to his rest today Pray that what he was to us, what he wished for others, will someday come to pass for all the world. But does it stop with two brothers? There is a third Kennedy. In several quatrains, Nostradamus writes about three brothers, but there is one in particular in which there seems little doubt that he is referring to both John and Edward Kennedy. The youngest son shall be slandered by a detractor. When enormous and martial deeds shall be done, the least part shall be doubtful to the eldest, and soon after they shall be equal in government. Here, Nostradamus is referring to John Kennedy as the eldest and Edward as the youngest. The youngest son shall be slandered by a detractor. Senator Edward Kennedy was placed in a very embarrassing and slanderous position over the drowning of Mary Jo Kopechny in July 1969. There were several developments in the Kennedy accident today. Among them, Police Chief Dominic Arena asked the district court to file a complaint against the senator, charging him with leaving the scene of an accident and failing to report it within a reasonable time. According to a statement given to police by Kennedy, he was heading for a ferry to the mainland with Mary Jo Kopechny, a former secretary to the late Robert Kennedy, and she was a passenger. Kennedy said he took the wrong turn and his car went off a narrow bridge into eight feet of water. Kennedy managed to escape, but Miss Kopechny drowned. According to police, eight hours elapsed from the time of the accident until he showed up at the police station to report it. When enormous and martial deeds shall be done, the least part shall be doubtful to the eldest. Many people were very doubtful of President John Kennedy's stand in the Cuban crisis, and particularly over the infamous Bay of Pigs incident. In Guantanamo, un descarado. Y hoy evacuamos los familiares de los militares ahí. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. Fortunately, a world war was avoided, and John Kennedy proved the value of his decision, which brings us to the last line of the quatrain. And soon after, they shall both be equal in government. This suggests that Edward will be equal to his brother John in government, that Edward Kennedy will be president of the United States of America. In the light of recent events and opinion polls, this would hardly seem to be an unreasonable prediction, but it was written 400 years ago. and the Catholic Church play a prominent part in the writings of Nostradamus. 
and there is no doubt that he makes a great appearance of being a devout believer. But there is a counter-suggestion that he was, in fact, masquerading as a Catholic to avoid the persecution and bigotry of the times. I think a lot of this was done to placate the authorities and allow the book to be published because you must remember that in um, long before the book came out, in 1540-odd, um, um, he made a remark at some dinner party that he was attending and he was then uh, chased by the Inquisition and asked to attend them at Toulouse for, in fact, a summary trial. He then ran to Italy and stayed there for 10 years till it calmed down. And to, once you were wanted by the Inquisition, you didn't take that thing like that lightly. Doris Collins, noted English medium, claims to have actually made contact with Nostradamus, who said on this matter... I was born a Jew. And although uh, I changed my religion, it did not alter the fact that I was born a Jew. Well, it's a debatable point about which we may never be sure. But there's little doubt over his predictions concerning the Catholic Church in general. In fact, there were quite a few of them, and had they been easier to interpret, Nostradamus would have run headlong into the trouble he took such pains to avoid. Through the death of the very old Pope will be elected a Roman of good age. It will be said of him that he dishonors the holy seat, but he will hold it long and with fierce courage. The very old Pope could be Pius XI, who died at the age of 82 years. His successor to the throne in 1939 was Pius XII. A Roman of good age. Pius XII was 63 when elected. The reference made by Nostradamus to his dishonoring the holy seat may suggest the opinion of many that the Pope's association with Mussolini and Hitler during World War II, when he did not stand against the Nazi atrocities, brought the papacy into disrepute. But he will hold it long and with fierce courage. But after the war, the reputation of Pius was restored by his leadership and his long reign. From 1939 to 1958, a total of 19 years. 19 years, one of the longest reigns in church history. In stark contrast, we recently had a pope whose reign was among the shortest. That was Pope John Paul I, a reign of only three weeks. His sudden, unexpected death was not only a great shock to the church and the world, but a source of mystery, controversy and speculation. Although it was officially announced that the pope had died a natural death, several questions have been raised. Questions which could relate directly to one of the quatrains, in which Nostradamus states that a pope will meet with an untimely end. At this point, we must stress that this program is concerned with merely bringing together the evidence of the experts and does not take a stand on its validity or otherwise. We recognize that much of this may bring discomfort to some people and perhaps disturb others, but we are dealing with prophecy and it should be viewed as such. It is ultimately up to you whether or not you believe it. For we now have a quatrain which says that a pope will be poisoned, and it's quite possible that Nostradamus is referring to Pope John Paul I. When the tomb of the great Roman is found, a pope will be elected the next day. He will not be approved of by the Senate, poisoned, his blood in the sacred chalice. The tomb of St. Peter was finally consecrated in St. Peter's Basilica during the reign of Paul VI. When he died in 1978, the next pope elected was John Paul I. A pope will be elected the next day. He will not be approved of by the Senate. The head of the world's most powerful church, new to his office, has turned out to be quite a different man from what his electors imagined. He has shown himself to be conservative, staunchly and outspokenly anti-communist, and seems prepared to impose much more discipline on his clergy. One night, he meets a series of cardinals, dines with two others, and sees two more before retiring. The following morning, he is found dead in his bed. The brief official announcement says he died of a heart attack. As far as anyone knows, he had been in perfect health. There is no autopsy. Church rules imply that there should not be. And the city's two most prominent embalmers are quickly whisked by limousine to the bedside to perform their task, obliterating forever the cause of death and leaving the question of who done it buried in the Byzantine workings of the church.
Uh, there were rumours. He was not found at the right time, and people should look to him. He was dead in his bed. Well, Nostradamus says that he was poisoned because the cardinals decided they had made the wrong choice and wanted another person in the place. That's quite a statement. I'll it's quite out. a statement. I, I appreciate it. If your life of lies have to go like that's fair enough. But that is in the prophecies quite genuinely. He that shall be covered with a great cloak shall be induced to commit some great act. The twelve red ones shall soil the tablecloth. Under murder, murder shall be committed. The Twelve Red Ones. We know that Pope John Paul dined with cardinals on the night of his death. But according to Nostradamus, John Paul I is not the only modern day pope to have a short reign. In another quatrain, he suggests that other future popes will reign only for short periods. After the sea has been held 17 years, five shall change within the same period of time. The suggestion here is quite simple and straightforward. It means that during a period of 17 years, we will have five different popes. But when will this occur? Well, history shows us that since the time of Nostradamus, we haven't had five popes in 17 years, so we must look to recent times to see if they fulfill the conditions. Pius XII reigned for 19 years. Perhaps he is a starting point, even though his reign was two years longer than Nostradamus stipulated. Of course, it must in all fairness be pointed out that to be two years out after 400 years seems a reasonable error. However, as Pius XII was succeeded by John XXIII for five years and Paul VI for 15 years, this cannot be right because the reigns of these two popes alone totals 20 years. So our Pope of 17 years cannot be Pius XII. But perhaps it could be Paul VI his reign was 15 years, again an error of two, as pointed out before. But before we investigate this, we must first turn to another prophet who lived before Nostradamus and who wrote exclusively about the popes. His name was Malachi. Saint Malachi, an Irish bishop of the 12th century, devoted his visionary powers to the future of the Roman popes. He predicted 112 popes from the year 1143, using symbolic and characteristic titles to describe each pope. According to St. Malachi, our present pope, John Paul II, is pope number 110. Pope 111 is described as Olive's glory, and pope number 112, Peter the Roman, the last of St. Malachi's popes. He writes, during the last persecution of the Holy Roman Church will reign Peter the Roman, who will tend his sheep amidst numerous tribulations. These having passed, the city of seven hills will be destroyed and the stern judge will judge his people. Now we have a chance to look into the future of the Catholic Church and Rome. Knowing that St. Malachi has said there will be 112 popes and John Paul II is number 110, then in his theory, there are to be only two more popes of Rome. The last to be called Peter, and the other, we're not sure. Now let's see how this compares to Nostradamus. He says, not that the popes will end, but that they will have to leave Rome because Rome is devastated. And he gives us a hint of the time when this will occur. If the pope who reigns for 17 years was Paul VI, then he will be followed by five more within the same period. One, John Paul I, three weeks. Two, John Paul II, three, Four, St. Malachi's last Pope of Rome, Peter. Five, another Pope, but not in Rome. And that Pope will be elected within 17 years from 1978. That is, by the year 1995. I quote Century 3, Quatrain 84. The great city will soon be quite deserted. Not a single one of the inhabitants will remain. Wall, six, church and the virgin, ravished. And in Century 2, Quatrain 41, he writes, The cloud will make the sun appear double. The witnesses to an atomic explosion have described the blast as appearing like a second sun. The large mastiff, the dogs of war, will howl all night when the great pontiff changes his abode. These two quatrains clearly describe the destruction of Rome. 
probably by a nuclear blast. And if we refer to the figures acquired earlier, it seems safe to assume that sometime before the year 1995, the Pope will have to leave Rome because the great city is devastated by an atomic bomb. of the Israeli state. But he goes much further than that. The great barbarian empire will crumble before the century of the sun is finished. Israel will be victors in this long-running war, and it will be finished by the end of the century of the sun, the name given to the 20th century. No more wars. Peace, real peace, and forever. Another striking quatrain relevant to our times. Rain, famine, war in Persia having not ceased. Two greater faiths shall betray the monarch. Being ended there, it shall commence in France. A secret omen to one that he shall die. This is a startling prediction giving outstanding detail of the war in Persia the ancient name for Iran. But let us examine it carefully. Too great a faith shall betray the monarch. It shall commence in France. Until recently, the majority of people did not know who the Ayatollah was, let alone that he would launch his coup from Paris. Yet Nostradamus, 400 years before, predicted it. Within weeks of leaving Paris, the Ayatollah had completed a total political and cultural revolution in Iran. All too much? Let's pause a moment. This is the year 1979 and we've just examined 400 years of history in the light of the prophecies of Nostradamus. Now, we're dealing with the present and the future, which brings us to what, for us, is the essence of the mystery. How accurate is he? Can we dismiss this as just another fad, or is there some credibility? If we believe what he said about our past, then there's a fair chance that what he said about our future is true also. And if that's the case, then we must listen very carefully. For Nostradamus, as he said, provides us with a warning. He does give us this hope. We can change our destiny, but we must heed the warning and act accordingly. For if we ignore it, we may not be around to remember how accurate he was. So now, the future. What does Nostradamus tell us will happen? Essentially, the prediction is war. A third world war that will be nuclear and far worse than all other wars put together. One that shall cause the infernal gods of Hannibal to live again, the terror of mankind. Never more horror, nor the papers tell of worse in the past. And in the last era, all the kingdoms of Christianity, and also all unbelievers shall quake for the space of years, and there shall be more grievous wars and battles. Towns, cities, castles, and other buildings shall be burnt, desolated, and destroyed. Married women and widows ravished. 
sucking children dashed against the walls of towns, and so many evils shall be committed by the means of that infernal prince, Satan, that almost the entire world shall be undone and desolate. So Nostradamus predicts the Third World War. What's so startling about that, you say? People have been predicting a Third World War ever since the second one finished. All right, but Nostradamus, who wrote this 400 years ago, also gives us the year and the signs to look for. He tells us who will be fighting and why, and suggests there will be occurrences of unprecedented natural disasters, such as floods, famine, and earthquakes, and tells us exactly when and where these events will take place. He assembles a powerful jigsaw puzzle, the eventual pattern of which cannot be denied. So let's take the pieces of that puzzle one by one. I might warn you that from now on the subject matter will not be very comfortable, but as the thinking creations of this universe, perhaps we have an obligation to protect it and consider any warnings to that end. Remember these warnings are not the opinions of the producers of this program, but interpretations of Nostradamus based on facts available today. If we are to have a war, we must ask ourselves five questions. When? Where? Who will be fighting? How long will it last? And who will survive? First we ask when, and although there are several hints left by Nostradamus, there are two which are quite clear and must be considered side by side. One, it could be as early as 1981, and the other stating quite clearly that the war will be well underway by 1999. In the year 1999 and seven months, from the sky will come the great king of terror. He will bring back to life the great king of the Mongols. Before and after, war reigns happily. Our second quatrain is unanimously understood as an Arab invasion of Europe, and the date, although obscure, can be determined by means of astrology. The king enters Europe wearing a blue turban, he will reign for less than a revolution of Saturn. The king with a white turban, his heart banished to Byzantium, Sun, Mars and Mercury near Aquarius. These uh, regular uh, conjunctions can be predicted and uh, they do occur uh, very regularly, but they don't occur frequently. The Sun, Mars, Mercury and Aquarius will be together in 1981 in February. The, actually on the 4th of February the moon will be passing in front of the sun, we'll get an eclipse of the sun. So we have a time. It could be as early as 1981 and in the specific words of Nostradamus it's already underway by 1999. That one quatrain suggests that it will be less than 29 years in duration and also gives a hint of who will be fighting. To have a war you must have aggression. Where will it come from? Russia? China? The West? In quatrain after quatrain, Nostradamus indicates that the trouble will come from the Middle East, specifically Iran, or as it was called in his day, Persia. By fire and sword, not far from the Black Sea, they shall come from Persia to seize upon Trebizond. The kingdoms of the church will be overcome by the sea towards Persia, very near a million. Help provided too late, Persia will turn and invade Macedonia. France by neglect shall be assaulted by five sides. Tunis and Algiers shall be stirred by the Persians. There are too many references to ignore the suggestion that the Middle East will play a central role in the trouble to come. And yet, is this a realistic possibility? After all, Nostradamus was talking about a time which may be only two years away. Could Persia, or Iran as we know it, cause a third world war? To answer this, let's turn to what we know of Iran today and the revival of Islam throughout the world. Founded in the 7th century, the Islam faith is the world's youngest universal religion. With an estimated 750 million followers, the faith has become the second largest and is fast catching up to Christianity. 
This past decade has seen a sudden and somewhat unexpected resurgence of Islam. Muslims throughout the world are rediscovering their spiritual roots and reasserting the political power of the Islamic way of life. The Islamic moral code is regarded by many Westerners as a relic of the Stone Age with harsh criminal provisions. For example, an habitual thief is punished by having his hand cut off. A person caught drinking alcohol receives 80 lashes. An adulterer is either scourged or stoned to death. World attention is now focused on the Islamic countries. They form what's been dubbed a crescent of crisis. Now that crescent straddles the crossroads of three continents, stretching in an arc from southern Africa through the Middle East to Southeast Asia. More than 20 countries in this region are exclusively Islamic. Muslims make up between 50 and 90% of the populations of another eight countries and in varying degrees up to 50% in yet a further 35 countries. Interestingly, the Soviet Union with 50 million Muslims has the world's fifth largest Islamic population after India, Indonesia, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Communist China also has a large Muslim community in its southern region estimated at just under 18 million people. The Crescent of Crisis, as the name implies, contains most of the world's trouble spots. It also contains most of the world's known oil deposits, a vital factor with the energy problems now being felt by most industrialized nations, both communist and non-communist. It's the importance of this factor that's given added impetus to the Islamic revival. The realization by Muslims that the major powers have become increasingly dependent on them for their very existence. The world's Muslims believe that they and their countries have been both economically and culturally suppressed by the superpowers, but that now because of the world oil situation, they're finally able to reassert themselves. The question that still remains is how the superpowers will react to this continuing development of the Islamic faith. Out of the country of Greater Arabia shall be born a strong master of Mohammedan law, who shall vex Spain and conquer Granada, and by sea shall come to the Italian nation. Now we must consider that Islam, or the Muslim nations, could pose a major threat politically and economically to world peace. They have the objective, they have the numbers. But do they have the technology to wage a nuclear war? We're fairly confident that none of the Muslim countries as yet possess any nuclear weapons. Dr. Donald uh, Brennan, director of the Hudson Institute in New York, is advisor to the American government on international power play and nuclear armaments. The major threat that we're concerned with in security planning for the United States is and will remain for a long while to come the Soviet Union. Uh, the Soviets could undoubtedly uh, inflame crises in many areas of the world that might lead to major wars. Uh, there are no other powers that are in prospect that would pose the kind of risk to Western security that the Soviet Union does. The Chinese uh, were perceived to be more of a threat several years ago, but even when they were thought to be some kind of threat, uh, no one thought of them as the primary threat, and it was not believed that they would be the primary threat for generations, probably. The possible threat from countries in the Middle East, uh, whether Iran or the Arabic countries, uh, is primarily an economic one in the near term, in that uh, these countries control much of the world's supply of oil, and that can become an important security threat. Apart from that, uh, problem because in part of the importance of oil the Soviet Union is very active in becoming involved in the Middle East and the Soviets might very well participate in some Middle Eastern crisis in some way that might very realistically lead to a war. The combination of Islamic manpower with Russia's nuclear capacity it could prove disastrous to the West and as Dr. Brennan suggested, such a combination is quite possible.
We know the Soviet Union has the fifth largest Muslim population in the world. Yet another reason why the two countries could combine. Also, surprisingly, Nostradamus even indicates that there might be a change in southern Russia, involving a split and even a decline of communism. The Moorish law will be seen to fail, followed by another that is more pleasing. Boris Danes will be the first to give way through gifts and tongues to another more appealing. This reference to Moorish law is intriguing because some ten years before Nostradamus first began his writings, Sir Thomas More published his famous Utopia, the great formula for the perfect but imaginary state. Now, obviously, Nostradamus would be familiar with the work, but what is intriguing is that he should predict that the Utopia, More's law, would become the basis for a new and revolutionary system of government in the 20th century, communism. And further than that, to suggest that it will ultimately weaken and fail. Boris Danes will be the first to give way through gifts and tongues to another more appealing. That could mean the end of communism. There is a reference to the river Boris Danes, which is the Dnieper in southern Russia. It says that Boris Danes will fail, that means Dnieper will fail first, uh, respectively, the southern Russia will fall first. Now, as we know, in southern Russia, there is a great influence of Islamic religion. And uh, this may mean that th to the people who live in southern Russia, uh, the Islamic doctrine will prove more seductive than communism. The old will hold strong, then removed from the scene. Then all things common among friends put far behind. All things common among friends, the main theme of communism, so aptly described by Nostradamus, is to be put far behind. So in answer to who, it's quite logical to suggest that the West and Christianity could be fighting a nuclear war against the Soviet Union and Islam united as the Eastern power. And why do we imagine it will be a nuclear war? Leave, leave, go forth out of Geneva all. Saturn of gold shall be changed into iron. The contrary of the positive ray shall exterminate all. The contrary of the positive which shall exterminate all. This could only be a reference to the chain reaction involved in nuclear fission in which the balance of positive and negative particles of the atom are bombarded by additional neutrons. Uranium undergoes fission, which means the atoms divide into two, and in the process they give off neutrons, and these will cause other atoms to divide into two, and each time an atom divides into two fission products, as they are called, a lot of energy is released, and one can and one can make the thing so that, a, so that many atoms divide the two simultaneously to generate a great deal of energy suddenly. From hidden fires a great place burns with heat. Little rain, a hot wind, wars and rains. It increases the temperature of everything in that region and of course they start to burn in the atmosphere. So it's the, 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 the main devastation is the result of widespread fires. Or all taking place simultaneously. Before it happens, the heavens shall show signs. In the year that Saturn and Mars are equally fiery, the air is very dry, a long meteor. Nostradamus clearly suggests here that there will be signs in the sky and warnings, a long meteor. Of people and beasts, shall be a horrible destruction. Blood, thirst, famine, when the comet shall run. Well, Halley's Comet is the most spectacular of the comets. It's a very big comet, and it's due in 1986. I bewail Nice, Monaco, Pisa, Genoa, Savona, Sien, Capua, Modena, Malua. Upon them blood and sword for a New Year's gift. Fire, earthquake, water, unhappy ending. Leave.
three cities of southern Europe devastated around the new year. A definite warning for Europe, not just confined to fire and water, but also earthquakes, a natural disaster which Nostradamus often says will take place in our immediate future. The earth shall so quake that it shall fall and ruin the great theatre. The earthquake shall be so great in the month of May, Saturn, Caper, Jupiter, Mercury and Taurus, Venus also, Cancer, Mars in zero, then hail shall fall, bigger than an egg. In that quatrain, 67 of the 10th century, he not only gives us the month of the great earthquake as being May, but also the means whereby the year can be calculated astrologically through the conjunction of Saturn, Jupiter, Capricorn, Mercury. And such a configuration occurs in the year 1988. 1986, Halley's Comet. 1988, the Great Earthquake. And where will this Great Earthquake be centered? There are many major fault lines across the world, but one which has already devastated a city and which scientists agree will strike again soon is the San Andreas Fault which runs along the west coast of the United States. The crust of the Earth is broken up into plates, which are moving with respect to each other. That, uh, normally, it doesn't occur smoothly. It occur, it's, uh, strain builds up like the energy you store in a rubber band when you stretch it, uh, until it, the rubber band breaks, uh, and the plates, or the, the rocks along the edge, snap back uh, into line, and uh, the vibrations that are caused by that sudden motion uh, radiate out and are felt and recorded as an earthquake. Uh, and if such a thing happens in a populated area, it's a great disaster. It's been determined that the recurrence rate between great earthquakes is about 160 years. The last one was in 1857, that was 122 years ago. So we're getting up into the time period when we have to think about such an occurrence. The San Andreas Fault uh, comes up from the Mexican border and goes up past San Francisco, very close to San Francisco, and on up to the north. There was one of about magnitude 8 in 1906 that destroyed San Francisco. still moving and only a certain amount of strain can be held up there it will happen again hopefully the buildings that are built there now can stand up to it better than the buildings that were there in 1906 fire from the center of the earth shall make an earthquake of the new city could it be that nostradamus means the newly built city of san francisco convinced that America will, will be shaken by an earthquake and he even says it will go as far north as to shake New York. I don't think New York will fall down but the effects will be so tremendous and this earthquake he repeats again and again and again. And further to that devastation there is famine. The great famine do I see drawing near turning from one way to another and then becoming universal. So great and long that they shall come to pluck the root from the wood and the child from the breast. A famine so bad that it leads to cannibalism. The bushel of wheat shall rise so high that man shall be a man-eater. Up until now, we've taken examples of quatrains and explained them and analyzed them. Now, we ask you just to listen to what Nostradamus has to say about the devastation of a nuclear war, a third world war. His description is so vivid, it needs no interpretation. The King 
kingdom of Fez shall come to those of Europe. Fire and sword shall destroy their city. The great one of Asia by land and sea with a great army, so that blues, greens, crosses, to death he shall drive. Tears, cries and wailing, howls and terror, an inhuman, cruel heart, black and cold. Lake Geneva, the islands, the main people of Genoa, blood pours, hunger for heat, mercy to none. The Arab prince, Mars, Saul, Venus, Leo, the kingdoms of the church will be overcome by the sea. Towards Persia, very near a million. Turkey, Egypt, true serpent will invade. In the Danube and Rhine shall come to drink the great camel and shall not repent. The Rome shall tremble and more those of Loire and near the Alps the cock shall ruin him. From the Black Sea and the great Tartaria a king shall come to see France. He shall go through Aramea and Armenia and shall leave a bloody rod in Constantinople. At the 48th degree of the climacteric, the end of cancer, there is a very great drought. Fish in the sea, river and the lake boiled hectic, Béarn and Bior in distress from fire in the sky. If France, you cross the Ligurian Sea, you will find yourself besieged among islands and sea. Mohammed against you, more so the Adriatic, you will gnaw the bones of horses and asses. The fleet is wrecked near the Adriatic Sea. The earth trembles, pushed into the air and falls again. Egypt trembles, Mahometan increase, and the herald is sent to call out for surrender. So the devastation spreads across Europe, and even into Egypt and Constantinople. But it does not stop there. The United States is also involved, as we can see from a quatrain which many experts agree refers to New York as the new city. Garden of the world near the new city, in the way of the man-made mountains, shall be seized on and plunged into a ferment. being forced to drink sulfurous, poisoned waters. The man-made mountains, an obvious description of modern skyscrapers. Further to that is the reference to the fire in the 45th degree latitude, which is very close to the position of New York City. The sky will burn at 45 degrees. Fire approaches the great new city. Immediately, a huge scattered flame leaps up. In answer to the question where, it's likely that most of the world will be involved. Hopefully some a little less than those specifically described by Nostradamus. Which brings us to the question of who will survive? To answer this, we need to remember Hiroshima and try to comprehend the devastation of more than 20 years of nuclear holocaust. Obviously, many of us would have no chance whatsoever. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Nostradamus does tell us the war will end and that the West will ultimately win due to an unexpected alliance, an alliance between the USA and Russia. Now, this may seem far-fetched, but let's examine the evidence given by Nostradamus. When those of the Arctic Pole shall be united together, there shall be in the East great fear and trembling. One shall be newly elected that shall bear the brunt. Rhodes, Constantinople shall be dyed with barbarian blood. Those of the Arctic Pole can only mean Russia and the US. As we see here at the Bering Strait, the two continents are at their closest point in the Arctic Circle. Alaska, part of the US, and Russia. 
And he goes on to say, in the east, great fear and trembling. So he's suggesting here that these two northern powers will unite against the east. And there's a further quatrain to support this. One day the two great masters shall be friends. Their great powers shall be increased. So after many years of fighting, it seems that Russia herself may become uncertain that there will be a division in the land. The south remaining with Islam due to the predominance of Muslim population and the north joining with the US, those of the Arctic Pole. And incredible as it may seem, Nostradamus suggests that this alliance will not only occur, but will triumph. As he says in several quatrains and also in one of his epistles. For the principal eastern ruler, being for the most part moved by the northern and western men, shall be vanquished and put to death, beaten, and all the rest put to flight, and the children he had by many women put in prison. The barbarian league will be driven out. Of the two laws, the pagan one will fail. Here he tells us the pagan law will be driven out, and goes on to talk of a king of Europe, who eventually becomes a driving force for victory for the West. As a griffin shall come king of Europe, accompanied by those of the North. The reds and whites shall conduct a great troop, and then shall go against the king of Babylon. There it is again, another reference to those of the North. And the reds and the whites? Russians and the West. By Antichrist, three shall be brought to nothing. His war shall last seven and twenty years. The heretics dead, prisoners exiled, exiled. Blood, human body, water made red, earth shrunk. Here, Nostradamus states definitely that the war will last for 27 years and that the third Antichrist will be driven back and brought to nothing. From Barcelona, from Genoa and Venice, from Sicily near Monaco united, Against the barbarian, the fleet shall take her aim. The barbarian shall be driven back. After this war shall have lasted a good while, there shall be a renewed reign of Saturn and a golden age. God, the creator, shall say, hearing the affliction of his people, Satan shall be put and tied in the bottom of the deep and here shall begin an age of universal peace. power shall return in force and Satan shall be bound for the peace of a thousand years. It seems our jigsaw puzzle is now complete. We are talking of a war that could begin in 1981 that definitely lasts for 27 years that involves the East and notably Islam against the West and Christianity ultimately in alliance with Russia. It spreads over most of the world but specifically in Europe. After that, there will be peace, possibly for as long as a thousand years. After that peace, we're not told much of what will happen. 
except that ultimately, and he actually gives the year, the world will end. The year, 3797. Scare tactics, common sense, or amazing guesswork? Who knows? Nostradamus didn't tell us very much more. The climax of his predictions is also the climax of this program. We're at the crossroads. Our immediate future is the worst war man will ever know. And not just according to Nostradamus. Hearing his words simply reminds us that a third war is highly possible, considering the current unrest across our world. It's something we all hope will never happen. Perhaps if we heed Nostradamus, it may not be too late. The decision is not up to the next generation. It's up to us. Good night.